a remote control of the robot with a remote controller, like for your TV at home, which is also possible with Timio. We are speaking about a remote control of the robot over the internet, which allows to Timio's users to program a, ro a Timio robot somewhere very far from them, for instance, in another building, in another city, or even in another country. To see the programming results, we can use, for instance, video streaming. Yes, so the control of the robot over the internet with the video feedback can be used by every team users, uh, beginner or with more experience. Some users are organizing remote activities with team uh, on a local school level, or some other uh, some others organize also after school activities with this uh, functionality. But why not to go? far and uh, to not organize such activity on a higher level by connecting schools in different cities or even countries. So a little bit of history. So the first international R2 T2 mission was organized in 2015 by the group called MOBETS of the EPFL. So the EPFL is the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology here in Lausanne, Switzerland. And 16 teams came together to carry out a remote robotic mission online. So um, these 16 teams were from six countries, such Switzerland, France, Italy, Austria, South Africa, and Russia. And uh, since then, more than 1,500 participants of different age groups, starting from eight years old and up, have taken part on it. It became possible only thanks to the support, of, uh, support and the interest of teachers who have joined this mission from 2015 and after. They are the most important motivation to continue the de development of this project. And we are so happy to welcome you today in our webinar, some of these teachers who organized teams for R2T2 missions since several years. They are with us today to share their experience in preparing and organizing team, as well as their ideas and their thoughts about this project. So today we have the pleasure of having Sebastian Minville from France, Lydia Klimovic from Russia, Natasha Sanders from South Africa, and Dawn Sutter from Switzerland. But before giving uh, to them the pleasure to talk, we will explain you what participants and teachers get from the rt 2 t missions and how with these missions are included with the MINT uh, Roteco teacher training. And as usual, you can write all your questions on the chat. Uh, we are going to collect them and the end of the webinar, we will answer to all of them. And we remind you that this session is recorded and we are going to share it on social media. So now I will let uh, Evgenia to start to this uh, RT2T2 discussion. Uh, thank you, Sophia. So now I'm sharing my presentation with you. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is a pleasure for me to present this project link uh, with robotics and space at the same time in April 2021, as this year is marked by many space events such as a Perseverance landing on Mars and the 60th anniversary of the first human flight in space marked by Yuri Gagarin in uh, 1961. Moreover, 2020 was also pretty productive. Now we have one more space vehicle, uh, SpaceX bringing astronauts uh, on uh, ISS International Space Station. And uh, however, there was one more win in 2020. For the first time in space history, astronauts have done the journey of uh, only three and a half hours um, to fly from the Earth to ISS. So can you imagine it's just only three and a half hours? So it's like, it's not, uh, it's not a lot, yes, to, to reach this point in space. All this news uh, uh, keep, um, uh, keep us motivated to continue explore, exploring our world. And uh, of course, all of us uh, here today uh, to help uh, like, to help children in this exploration. And uh, now I will explain you how we are to do collaboration pro project do it. Um, so all the RT2 missions are based on space scenarios. 
uh, the first and the most popular mission called RTD2 Mars mission dives participants uh, in a fictional story where they need to repair a generator of a Mars station damaged by a meteorite shooting. Uh, there are 16 robots which will be controlled by 16 teams of engineers all over the world. Uh, they have less than three hours to do it, otherwise the signal will be lost. All teams uh, have the same goal. They need to collaborate with each other during all missions. They do not need to compete with each other. So uh, why we have chosen these like, space scenarios around this R22 project? Of course, uh, the Mars station with Chemius is not on Mars. That we can understand. Uh, the, the setup of um, uh, these Chemio robots that you can see actually on my screen, on your screens, um, is installed at the APFL. And Eugenia, yes. Eugenia, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, you are showing something because for the moment we don't see your screen. Really? Yes, sorry to interrupt you. Um, yes, I was showing something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now we now see your can, screen. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Don't <laughs> worry. Fine. <laughs> so now I, um, yes. So you can see here the setup. Actually, that we have uh, by the moment we have this setup installed at the EPFL. Uh, as the EPFL like uh, has like. Yes, developed this project and uh, uh, still help uh, help uh, helps us a lot uh, to uh, to maintain and to invite all schools and um, uh, do these missions. And actually, at the screen that you can see, uh, this screen teams uh, see during the mission, uh, so they see what is happening here uh, on a streaming video. Uh, it is the only possibility that they have to see results of their programming. However, the programming experience will not be the same as when they program a local robot. The video signal has a time delay of 30 seconds. It means when uh, a team uh, sends a program to uh, their robot, its robot, uh, in this case, robot executes this uh, program just after they click on button like uh, send the program. Uh, but they will see actually how robot uh, does it on um, does it uh, on the video in 30 seconds. Uh, so um, to explain this delay, we have to create uh, uh, we have created this space story as Mars is far, uh, far from our planet. So the signal comes later. So how is it possible actually to program remotely robots? For that, we, uh, uh, we use the uh, Aziba 161 package, uh, which allows us to share the connection uh, with anyone on the, on our world, <laughs> in our world, and um, um, like some information on how we are doing actually and how you can do it uh, on your own. Uh, is described uh, in the MOOC uh, about Timio in French and German. I will send after like my speech or in the end of the webinar, I will send like uh, links to these uh, MOOCs. And also you can find some instruction uh, in English uh, on old uh, Timio website. Uh, there you will find um, explanation how uh, it's possible to use this application Azeba switch that you can see on the screen and how to share the connection actually with um, someone, with your friends, maybe. So because of this time delay of the video, we advise all teams to test all programs locally with local material in order to reproduce a similar environment that the robot uh, on Mars have has. One team, um, Oh, so, sorry, one time uh, the program works uh, with a local robot. A team can send uh, it to the robot on Mars. It will allow to avoid mistakes. If an error is produced, it can change a lot a situation on Mars. For example, one team can bump another team or go out from the video view. Uh, so uh, that is why it is very important to collaborate and communicate with uh, each other. Uh, 
uh, and between teams in order to coordinate all activities happening on Mars. Uh, do not forget that all, uh, all teams have actually the same goal. Uh, so it's like because of it, it's also very important uh, to coordinate uh, all, uh, all programs and uh, all activities on Mars. Uh, such activity allows also to children to learn how to cut a complex task uh, in simple steps. And um, the, uh, for example, I, I can um, take uh, this like red robot and this red robot uh, should go to this, um, to this parking zone. So how to do it? Um, maybe like uh, a team, uh, they uh, advanced in the programming and they can, for example, create a one program on one step, um, for example, to turn to 90 degrees, yes, and after to move forward, and it could be one program with several links, as yes, they can create two small programs. For example, first program, like turn to, to the right to 90 degrees, first program, we have sent, uh, the robot is done, uh, done it, and after, robot can move forward, it will be a second program. Uh, so um, there is not the goal to come and uh, to create, uh, to come and to create a complex uh, program uh, in order to, uh, to achieve uh, the final point uh, in one click. Uh, there is a goal to come uh, before the signal with the station will be lost. So it's better maybe uh, to choose a strategy, another strategy is yes, to create like uh, simple programs, uh, some several sim simple programs uh, instead of a complex one, which can create and uh, produce a mistake. And of course, these simple programs can be tested and uh, like this, maybe also uh, teams can gain time and to not lose time at least. Uh, so, as we have mentioned before, participants uh, learn to collaborate with each other in a team or between teams. They communicate in different languages, they learn different approach of uh, programming and enjoy it uh, at the same time. Um, and uh, the time delay of the video signal forces teams to reflect more about their next step. We have some research done about it, uh, which show, uh, shows that teams to um, use less uh, trial and error strategy. It means uh, they, um, they leave this uh, concept of like uh, program test, program test. Uh, they start to reflect more about next step. Uh, they start to reflect more about uh, algorithms and uh, how, to, how to program the next, uh, um, how, yes, uh, how to compose the next uh, program. And uh, here I would like uh, to present you one, uh, one, um, one research done uh, by, Morgan, uh, by Morgan Chevalier and uh, other um, uh, authors of the paper. Uh, they have published in 2020 uh, the paper called Fostering Computational Thinking Through Educational Robotics, a Model for Creative Computational Thinking Problem Solving. Uh, they proposed um, there this CCPS model, which means creative competitional problem solving, uh, which presents uh, represents six steps of uh, this like uh, competitional thinking. Um, and uh, this year, the uh, um, one more paper will be published, and this paper will be more about RT2 missions, uh, which will be based actually on uh, on this model. And uh, um, like um, we cannot share like a lot of details by the moment, but the most important uh, maybe part of this research uh, shows us that actually uh, participants during these R2G2 missions, uh, they do um, like they use four steps of this uh, model of six steps and they, uh, pass more time on formulating the uh, robot's behavior, programming the behavior and evaluating the behavior. And after also they uh, spend more time or on understanding the problem. And moreover, uh, during this 
of task behavior, it means when uh, children do not actually program robots, um, but like they speak about like other subjects, etc. Uh, during this, uh, yes, this behavior of children, they start to discuss not another project, but more they discuss uh, what is happening in other sectors. For example, they discuss what they see, they analyze that like other teams do differently, etc. Uh, but at the same time, it is like um, it is only a sense of this uh, video uh, delay uh, that we have uh, another another group of children who had not actually didn't have this time delay of the video. Uh, they uh, but they were doing actually the same mission. They were uh, spending more time on these two uh, tasks. And uh, it means that uh, they go more in this uh, trial and error uh, model. And uh, this is not our goal in education. Uh, so, and after, I would like also to share with you our, um, like some changes that we have done during uh, 2020. Uh, 2020 have pushed us uh, to work more on developing one of this project because we have understood that it's like we'll say time uh, to show this project to a larger public than it was before. Uh, we have created a website, or to do dash collaboration.com. And after we have also created a preparatory material for teachers, uh, for participants. We have created a, a Corona Artitude mission where we propose offer to teachers to discover and to test uh, what is it this R32 mission and also to discover a uh, programming of the team robot. And uh, as a result of all this work, uh, we have launched a registration in the beginning of this year, we have launched a registration to the um, uh, R32 Rendezvous Mars edition. Uh, we, and the uh, missions of this edition will take place in May, June of this year. And just to compare the uh, impact of this, maybe it's like because of the COVID, maybe because uh, we have right now already all materials that we can give to new teachers who can join us. Uh, we have received more participants than it was before. and. Uh, if before we had uh, during five years or six years of our experience, we have received um, and done uh, uh, missions for 1500 participants. Now uh, in May, June, we are waiting for 700 participants and we have three new countries uh, and uh, they are welcome. It's Poland, uh, it's um, Singapore and uh, um, one more, I, ah, and Belgium, of course. Uh, so uh, welcome to all of uh, them. Um, I think uh, that's all. Now I would like to give a word to Sofia, and Sofia will present you how this Artitude missions actually is uh, included in uh, Rotoko uh, teacher trainings here in Switzerland. It is another way also for us to form teachers with a team robot and also about like uh, r 2 mission. Uh, so, uh, Sofia, I'm preparing the presentation for you. Just one Thank moment. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. worry. Share the slides. Yeah. Um, Thank you so much. It's, it's very, um, for me, it's very um, important to see, in fact, how COVID uh, brings new innovation and dynamic by the numbers that you show to us. Yes, mm -hmm. it was also, uh, sorry don't worry take, take your time it's okay. thank you so much yes <laughs> perfect thank you so much for sharing Eugenia yes. so um, as you know uh, Roteco aims to create a community okay of teachers interesting in educational robotics in fact to offer we also offer trainings in this field in order to increase the presence of robotics into the classroom and as part of the project, a teacher training was developed by our partner. And this training was called Mint Roteco Training. Uh, 
And in this part of the presentation right now, I wish to tell you about this uh, Mint Roteco training. In the picture, you can see the last Roteco training that the Asher Pevo uh, make with uh, Morgan and Evgenia. Melissa was there, I was there, and members from Mopsia were there also to bring new content. And in, the goal is that you understand that the mission can also be used in the teacher's training or on a team building activities. So um, you can go to the next slide. Thank you. So these training courses take place in three different regions in Switzerland. So Vo, where we speak French, Ticino, where we speak uh, Italian, and Zurich, where we speak German. So in three different languages and are made possible thanks to the collaboration of several Swiss continuous education institutions. And they have been um, held every year since 2018. And the objective is to make the participate teachers experience education robotics and its potential in order to reassure and accompany them. Um, because teachers often tend to believe that robotics is too difficult or that they don't have the sufficient skills to integrate it into the classroom. So, you know, it's called the low self-efficacy. So during these three days of training, uh, the Timio uh, robot and different didactic activities are presented. The activities also focused on the social content and transversal competences, and not only on technical elements. So the activities combine robotics with other STEAM disciplines, and uh, especially with transversal competence such as cooperation, communication, and of course, creativity. And uh, in addition to providing resources and content that teachers can integrate in their classroom, the Roteco training aims um, at a positive and it enthusiastic change in the representation of teachers about robotics so that they understand that uh, we have many benefits of integrating th these new concepts. You can go to the next slide, please, Evgenia. Thank you. So, of course, on the last day of the training, we have a common event organized. It's the RT22 mission. And the teachers are in different geographic locations and have to cooperate, uh, program, and control the 16 Timius robots located, of course, as we already say, in the BFL. So they are connected remotely. Uh, next slide, please, Evgenia. Thank you so much. And uh, in order to carry all these different phases of the mission, the teachers must not only um, will sell program correctly, but they also uh, collaborate with all these teachers from all the regions. And these courses encourage them to the birth and the growth of the true community because they live the experience and they have this common patient and this specific interest in pedagogical innovation and the adoption of new uh, practices related to educational robotics in their classroom. And on this last uh, slide that I wanted to present, uh, I wanted to share you some of the testimonials. Two testimonials are from teachers and one is from the trainer. So I let you read, for example, the first one says that uh, this course has opened up a whole new teacher perspective from him, a uh, programming perspective that their students will certainly have a lot of do in the future. So we have to think in the future generation. The second uh, testimonial is more um, on the topic of motivation. So the motivation is very different from other courses. The students communicate more with each other, look for solutions, and don't ask the teacher if what it is planned is corrected, because the feedback is given directly by the team. And the last one from Morgan, so she is the trainer. Uh, I learned about, but uh, already knew, that teachers need to experience things in order to make them their own. 
So I have personally experienced this mission as a participant with, for example, Melissa, and I can guarantee you that you are quickly caught uh, in the game. In fact, it is a pleasant moment and you don't even realize that you are learning and the scenario and the environment make the motivation and interest are there. So, um, and um, it was a really pleasure for us to know from Genia that one of the teachers who has participated in the last training in 2019 has subscribed for the RT2T2 mission that will take uh, place in May and June 2011. And when we have asked her why she has decided to subscribe, she answered that um, she remember how fun this activity was and she remember her emotions and talks that she should describe her students. So yes, that's it for my presentation. Sophia and Genia, thank you a lot for your presentation. So we have been following you and listening about this project from the side of organizers and robotics teachers community. But now is the time to hear from the former participants think about it. We welcome Sebastian Menvier to share with us his experience and show us how this mission inspired him to create new activities for his students. Sebastian, I let you present yourself and show your video. Yes, uh, welcome. Um, nice to, to be here for this webinar. So I was, I am participated at the first, maybe the first or the second R2T2 in 2K16 is a great experience because I'm a teacher and with my classroom, um, a classroom of uh, 26 students. So it's a big organization and um, I, made, I made some activities before the R2T2 to prepare the students for the for, the, for the, the time of the mission. So again, yeah, well, we can show the video, it's more clear. Yes, I'm preparing. Mm -hmm. So are you ready? Yes. Hello, my name is Sebastian Maviel uh, from Bordeaux. I'm a teacher yes, from- Yes, we can. It years, works. 17 years ago, yes, of kids from 8 to 12. And I'm also the coach of the team named uh, Algothemio. Let me show you the, the website and different parts of the Algothemio team for competition and experimentations. This is a website, Algothemio. We can find a way to teach the robotic at teenager in the different parts, my name. And also the Journal de Bord is for um, the different missions, experimentations and competitions. And uh, on this part, we can find the Robo Cup, um, also the a challenge, a very interesting challenge, the maze, Robo Cup uh, Junior in European uh, Italian, Robo Makers Day in Bordeaux, um, Open Robo Cup Junior, in 2016 and the R2T2 and also different way like Roboscar is a challenge video contest. Um, My first participations at R2T2 missions was in 2016 with the college classrooms and 2017 with the Alco Timio team. Uh, after I integrate the, this experience in the official educational uh, French programs um, with different activities in my classroom that you can see uh, on my website algothemio.blogspot.com. So um, after I teach uh, activity focused um, activities with uh, Timio focused on uh, a part of the R2T2 big problem. That's uh, very important in robotic to solve. The, it's better to solve a few little problems than one big problem. So uh, I decided with my kids to uh, to experiment different activities focused on the part of the little part that I decided. Um, also, my kids says uh, it's better to fail a lot before to success. So it's very important to experiment before the the date with uh, R2T2 and other, other teams. Uh, let me show you the different activities that I used uh, to be in my, uh, in my classrooms. First challenge, um, classroom staff delivery. Use the Timio robot 
to deliver uh, some stuff like rubbers or uh, rulers uh, in the classroom. So two ways. The first one is to follow a black line, so it's easy for us, and also use obstacles with the sensor active. So in this challenge, there's another challenge to open a door when the sensors are on. So they have to adjust the sensor sensibility to, um, to open the door with the Lego plugs. So it's very interesting. Don't Classroom staff delivery, open the door, that's two problems, follow black lines or uh, use obstacles and adjust the sensor sensibility. Yeah, the, they success. Challenge number two, um, to exit a random maze. So the, the problem is to follow a wall on the side, the left side on this uh, example. And also the no way corridor is very interesting also to, to solve um, on VPL, it's easy. So interesting on the R2T2 mission. Challenge number four for R2T2 missions, to grab an object in an accessible zone, like the white dot in the second part of the mission of R2T2. So use the clock to change the way that the robot moves. Like in this example, when the sensor sees an object in the front, make a half turn from two seconds. Very important on R2T2 mission. After the difference, those different activities, the kids are ready to challenge the R2T2 mission to Mars. The best part of the mission is to work together in the classroom, to collaborate with other teams, and the best part of this uh, R2T2 missions for me is the opening door, you know, when two uh, or three robots follow the lines and one has to push the, the door off to open the zone. It's very, 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 very clever. So, uh, see you on the next R2T2 and uh, maybe with the Alco Timo team and all my classrooms. Bye. Thank you, Sebastian, for your interesting presentation. Uh, you can find more activities from Sebastian also on our Roteco website because Sebastian has become a Roteco ambassador. Congratulations, uh, Sebastian. Thank you so much. And now I present uh, Natasha from South Africa. She participates in RT2T2 mission since several years. And Natasha has owned a preschool um, coordinate a provision home schooling group manage corporate trainings and lecture in private schools um, in college and her journey in education in education has been a uh, weaving path which has led her opening of the code at but robotics and coding center for kids and teenagers so natasha please tell us your experience about rt2t2 mission why the, um, they stay interesting for you and what as a teacher do you appreciate in these um, activities so thank you so much for the floor um, it's lovely to greet everyone from South Africa, and I'm excited to be a part of this journey. Um, Codabot is a training center where we've chosen to use robotics to teach coding. We like the interactive experience of many different robots um, so that children can touch. And for me, this all started when um, a local university hosted an event um, and it was a competition-based event. And I went along and my team won, which meant we had a very positive experience. The children were encouraged, the children were happy, and, and I was very excited and absolutely saw a vision for robotics as a teacher. Next to me, I had some good teammates and teacher friends who experienced that event very negatively because they were dealing with the emotions of the children who felt very differently because they'd worked hard and they had nothing to show for it based on the fact that it was a competition. Um, and one of the things I realized that in robotics, where you center things around a competition, you can sometimes shoot yourself in the foot 
where your children do not get success competitively. So success, succession planning is actually quite difficult. They go, I don't want to do that again. It wasn't fun. Um, I worked hard and I didn't win. And I only discovered that when I had a team that didn't win and suddenly they didn't want to go back the next year. So one of the things that I really appreciated about the um, R2T2 um, mission was that it was collaborative. That even when I went in my first year, I think we were terrible. I think at one stage they switched off the cameras and moved our robot by hand, to tell you the honest truth, because we were so far behind. And um, the children loved it. They absolutely loved the experience. And when I said, who's coming back next year? Even though the coding was terrible, um, the outcome was slow. I think we did not make the three hour cutoff. Um, they loved it. And it has been wonderful to see the children saying, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back because I enjoyed it. And so what is exciting for me is this collaboration focus become something that encourages children to continue to learn the skill of coding, which is lovely for me. One of the guiding principles at Code About Robotics Center is we learn from what we do know to what we don't know. So for instance, when we all have young children, we will give them wooden blocks to play with um, until they can touch it, experience it, bite it, chew it. And then later we'll show them an abstract representation of that in a book. Um, and so the reason I chose robotics and coding was just that principle that if children can touch it, experience it, interact with it, they will learn so much better once they've got it abstract onto script programming. But because you encourage and you draw a lot of children who like hands-on um, education, you do also draw children who are perhaps on the spectrum when it comes to autism or um, children with attention deficit disorders that um, join us. What I loved about this collaboration event is that for those kind of children, these three hours seem to fly past because there are so many roles that these children can take when they are busy working. Someone can be coding, someone can be communicating, someone can be testing, someone can be watching the screen for that 30 second delay to see what is our robot doing. And I, I have found that when it comes to experiential learning, um, even children who have difficulties in focusing concentration, the time really does seem to fly by for them and they really, really enjoy it. Um, as an educator, I've had some hilarious moments with the communication. Um, I, I remember walking past the group of children sitting on the communication computer, busy talking, I think it was a Russian team. And they were about to type up what they were saying. And I had to run and grab the do not press enter because they were using South African slang language. And I could just hear that the Russians on the other side would think, you, you South Africans are rude. So what was precious for me in that moment was, even though this is robotics, up comes life skills in teaching children about, you need to know your target communication of audience. You need to understand that sarcasm doesn't come across well in tone in written language. Um, cultures are different to yours. They're gonna perceive things differently. So that was very exciting for me. And lastly, I think just as a, a teacher and a business owner, um, it's such a positive thing to sell, to say to people, we're going to do a competition where we go to, or an event, sorry, where we're going to remotely take control of robots in another country and drive them. It's such, uh, I've never had a parent turn around and say, no, no, thank you, not for us. So I've really, really enjoyed this in event. Uh, thank you, Natasha, a lot uh, for this uh, testimonial. It's uh, really very, like, it's pressure for us to to hear all of you today. And, um, yeah, thank you a lot. Uh, so, um, now, uh, Lydia, I think uh, I, I will show your, uh, your video today. Uh, so, we have also uh, Lydia Klimovic, uh, it is a uh, teacher from Russia, she has joined us also in 2015, and uh, uh, like still we have like every year when we uh, organize the missions, uh, Lydia has several teams, 
and uh, she has actually uh, prepared for us. She is a teacher in a public school, uh, and uh, she teaches um, uh, informatic computer science classes. Uh, she is also a member of association of uh, computer science teachers in Moscow region, uh, and uh, she, she is uh, she is today with us. However, in order like to simplify a little bit the task that we have uh, given to all of you today uh, to participate and uh, to share with all of us your experience, uh, we have given this option that like uh, you can also. Uh, record your video and we will share this video with others if it's uh, simpler for you because of course like uh, to speak another language it is not uh, um, it is not so simple and uh, here this webinar is an example how we adapt uh, um, these uh, different knowledges uh, with uh, uh, with all of you so i am sharing the video this video is done in russian so sometimes I will put like uh, uh, I, I will pause the video and uh, I, I will translate uh, about what Lydia is uh, speaking there. So I'm sharing. Thanks. <laughs> I'm sharing uh, this video. You can see. Yes. Yes, we can see the video, Perfect. Eugenia. Добрый день! Приветствую всех участников встречи. Сегодня я хотела бы сказать пару слов о том, как в России мы организуем участие в миссии r 2 и почему для нас важно участие в этом мероприятии. В России сейчас активно развивается сетевое взаимодействие между образовательными организациями. Ресурсные центры принимают у себя подростков из других школ, давая возможность большему числу ребят прикоснуться к миру современных профессий и попробовать себя в новой деятельности различной направленности. Uh, so it's just uh, uh, Lydia is uh, like explaining us that uh, now in Russia there are a lot of programs uh, which uh, pushes uh, uh, like a different educational center to work together in order to open the possibility to children, to all children, uh, to uh, to connect to each other and also to try different roles uh, in technologies, etc. And here you can see some uh, uh, some pictures from last past um, uh, past missions uh, with Artuti uh, missions with the teams. Timio, маленький мобильный робот. С ним удобно работать не только у нас в школе, приглашая других, но и брать с собой. Так с Timio мы побывали в гостях уже нескольких местных организаций, после чего они приняли с нами участие в миссии Artuti Two. Это детский технопарк Квандориум города Королёв, гимназия номер одиннадцать города Королёв. So uh, she also she is explaining uh, here that um, uh, Timio robot is uh, used like they have started to use it in uh, their schools, uh, gymnasium five, and after they with this robot they uh, have visited several different uh, educational centers also and these centers have joined us after in rtg2 missions and uh, um, like uh, such centers as uh, quantorium and another school миссия r2 t2 вдохновляет нас на другие исследовательские проектные работы по теме космос для нас это очень важно мы живем в городе королев который неофициально называется космической столицей россии и в нашей жизни иногда космоса слишком много Поэтому интерес детей постепенно угасает. И для нас очень важно показать им новый взгляд на проблему, показать в этой ролевой игре, что проблемы решаются командой, и чем выше ответственность, тем интереснее их решать. Uh, she also like Lydia is explaining to us is that for them it's uh, very interesting to participate participate in uh, the event in like uh, this space story because uh, they are coming from a, um, uh, a like city called uh, Karolov. The city is uh, our like uh, space capital in Russia, uh, where we have we have developed like first. Uh, um, first in Sputnik, etc., and Karolyov is a, a constructor of the first uh, all first steps uh, in uh, in our space journey of the world. Uh, and uh, of course, like what is interesting for them as for participants, uh, it's like to um, to see that 
as like when they have a responsibility, like higher responsibilities, in this case, the task is like more difficult for them. And it's even like uh, more interesting for them to, um, yeah, to, to participate, to find a way uh, to resolve problems, etc. And uh, this is very important uh, in uh, uh, such uh, like city where they can, um, let's say, use to uh, already to this space activities that uh, are running right now. При формировании команд важно, чтобы присутствовал полный набор необходимых навыков у участников. Должны быть программисты, стратегии, ответственные за коммуникацию и так далее. Но самое важное, дети должны быть командой, они должны быть совместимы с друг с другом. Поэтому перед встречами мы часто проводим игры на команду образования. Миссия Эртутиту мы называем одной из любимых наших миссий в течение учебного года, потому что она дает массу положительных эмоций. Это возможность общения с новым кругом людей, как внутри команды, так и за ее пределами. Сейчас никогда важно в связи с ограничением передвижения между странами. Дети должны не забывать о том, какие мы все разные, как разнообразен мир и вдохновляться примером других детей из других стран. На миссиях нас всегда радует и удивляет. Uh, how it's like important to be in a team, to work all together, to collaborate with different skills. They have uh, uh, children uh, coming like, uh, yes, who will do uh, strategy, who will do, uh, for example, the programming, etc. And it's very important to find a way with all these different skills uh, to, to be together, to work together. And uh, uh, moreover, uh, for like before, uh, before the mission, they run some activities with children where they need to create this uh, team uh, uh, teamwork together and uh, maybe just uh, um, I, I'm putting I'm pretty sure that there will be some uh, pictures with children I run already the video just to, uh, to cut a little bit the time to economize the time and I know that like uh, Lydia is also explaining how actually they communicate Yes, they are in Russia. They do not speak a lot of uh, like English, uh, French in uh, everyday life. So uh, they have to find uh, every time they find uh, uh, um, like students who can speak, ha can do it actually. And um, sometimes they have those who speak French or those who speaks uh, speaks English. Um, but during during the mission itself, uh, they uh, just like uh, decide with other teams which language actually they will use and uh, what was interesting also for them it's uh, sometimes it's just smiles that yes emoji that they send in uh, in chats that like uh, can explain already emotions etc and uh, sometimes when we had uh, the possibility to have a video video uh, between teams there we um, uh yes they used the gestures etc in order to explain to, to each other what they see and their emotions so for them uh, it is always a pleasure to participate in it uh, lydia thank you a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> so and also please uh, are this like uh, um, you can write uh, all questions uh, in the chat you can uh, write us privately or you can write us uh, like in the public chat that you can see and uh, now we come to uh, Down Suter. Uh, she is there, and I'm. Uh, yes, hello, Down. Hi, everyone. <laughs> we can hear you. We can see you. <laughs> That's great. Happy to be here. Yes. Thank you for inviting me to this chat. This is really great work. Yeah, uh, but th thank all of you because, like, without you, it would it would be not possible. Also. <laughs> Uh, so down uh, she, she is uh, from Switzerland actually she is from uh, uh, Zurich uh, she is a CEO of uh, Tikmani, a learning lab center for ages uh, 5 uh, 14 years old 
that provides next generation uh, uh, enhancement activities and uh, programs in science, technology, uh, engineering, art, and math. Um, it offers various methods to help facilitate a, a, a greater impact of computational uh, computing and science in primary education. Um, so, and uh, uh, now um, we will do this like uh, last step um, and last conversation with Dawn. We are organizing as an uh, interview. Uh, and uh, we, we will see and we uh, will hear uh, her experience. Uh, so Dawn, uh, welcome one more time. And um, uh, you are with us also from like 2015. So you have joined, I think, or 2015 or 2060. 2015, I, I, yes. 15, it's, yes. It's been a few years. Since, yes, <laughs> since <laughs> the beginning. Uh, so uh, for us, it will be interesting to know uh, what value in this mission do you see? And uh, as you are coming every year uh, to us, why it is still interesting for you? Uh, which impact do, uh, do you see like in uh, um, yes, learning experience for children, etc.? So I let you uh, the work on it. Okay, so uh, the, the first part of your question, uh, I, I feel that this activity is wonderful to get children to work and collaborate with each other, um, especially at the, at the younger ages, like um, 12, 13, 14. This is where they start really learning how to collaborate with each other. Uh, and they have to work with their peers side by side. And then as a team, they have to work with the other teams in other cultures, other countries, other languages, that they somehow have to all together combine and realize that if they don't do it all together, then none of them are going to succeed. So, getting them to work together and they're you know going through the training exercises they're like yeah 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 we got this we can do this we can do that and then they get into the control center room and the first time they're communicating with another team from like france or from russia they're like oh wait this is another country this is another team and then they realize the uh, opportunity that they have to uh, to speak with one another I, I remember at one point a few years ago, the language of the competition was in French. And then halfway through the competition, it kind of slid into English <laughs> because just overall with the, with the way that the teams were comfortable working with each other as the competition went on, that's kind of the way that the, that the language went. Um, but uh, I, I think it's really great to see them come together as a multinational group of, of students that uh, work together to get a task done. And this is, this is a great demonstration of that. Um, the second part of that question, what do I like to see with, with the kids? Uh, for me, uh, the most exciting part of, of, of uh, this challenge is when they get that aha moment, when they see the, the team, you know, they have to make it go certain amount of steps or make a right turn or push the entrance to make it free. And they do it and they test it and they send the command and then they're all staring at the screen and they're waiting and like two minutes go by. And then the Timio moves, but in the wrong direction. And they're like, wait, what just happened? And then they realize that they really have to test and plan every step before they send it to, to, to the robot long distance. So that for me has always been my favorite part of, of the uh, experience. And it's, uh, it's very nice. Thank you, Dal. And uh, also, I know, for example, uh, like all of you, like who are presenting today your testimonials, I know that uh, you have like different experience in how you actually like prepare your children also, your teams, and also how you run uh, these teams. And uh, uh, for example, uh, in Russia, I know that uh, they can um, uh, create a team where they have uh, uh, children from previous missions, so, so, uh, so like 
uh, aged children, uh, more aged than uh, new teens. And actually, these children who have already participated in uh, our duty commissions, they uh, train and supervise new teens. Uh, but here with Down, I know that uh, you also you go um, and uh, you let's say help teachers on even like do uh, uh, do these missions and prepare class of other teachers and uh, you help them run this mission actually and prepare this mission uh, in the classroom uh, their classroom or your facility but actually you are not alone there is like one more teacher is it right correct this is this is true we like to get the teachers involved as well yeah. because it, it helps to to fortify and for them to see the the actual learning process and what they actually get from the experience so so basically we go through uh two very um intense training sessions one week or two weeks prior to the actual event and the teacher also participates and uh, get them up to speed on Teamio and how to program Teamio and the different challenges that they have to do with the kids get homework that they have to do uh, and bring in and prepare for the next course. And then the day of the event is when I actually give everybody the specifications of what the challenge actually is. So all they know is it has something to do with space. They don't know anything else. And then the day of the challenge, they are told what the actual mission is. Uh, of course, the teacher already knows in advance what the mission is. This, this information I, I share with the teacher because I tried to use it as a training opportunity as well. Yeah. The children themselves have no idea until they come to the event. And, oh, wait, we're on Mars <laughs> or we're on the moon or whatever it is. So oh, it's nice. It's very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Dawn. So now we, we have like just two minutes or maybe a little bit more, more after, but uh, for questions and uh, um, like, thank you, sir. We received some questions or not. Uh, yeah, of course, I have, uh, I have some question now uh, came uh, uh, in chat privately. Um, Actually, I have uh, many questions myself as well. <laughs> but uh, first of all, uh, <laughs> first of all, it's, uh, it's a teacher who's saying, uh, if I'm a beginner and I want to participate and, and uh, subscribe my class, where should I start? Uh, can, can you give me like a step-to-step -step, uh, uh, practice? Yes, so uh, from my side, I, I can share with you uh, right now we have a uh, um, website rtt2collaboration.com actually and uh, I am like I'm sharing with you my screen to show you how it works this one and after um, uh, you can go on like uh, for example Mars mission yes which is uh, subject of our conversation almost of today and uh, here you you can read like let's say step by step that you you can follow and uh, here you will have a preparatory material and you have it in english too so if you visit the website you will have a preparatory material for um, for teams what you need on the day of the mission uh, you can download this material. There is a guide, teacher's guide, that you can also um, download. Uh, for any question, uh, you can just uh, write us. And you can ask us about like uh, which missions uh, we will have in the future, in this year or not. Uh, or maybe you would like to organize it uh, for only your school so we we will uh, we will write back to you uh, by the moment i think uh, like we have actually we have some places uh, free uh, available places uh, for missions in may june of this year so if uh, you would like uh, to subscribe your teams you can come to us you can write and uh, we will see we will propose uh, several dates um, otherwise just uh, follow follow us and uh, um, 
write us really we we are there to answer to you i have another question linked to this actually uh, if somebody wants to just to try the uh, the material and the preparation material to see if uh, he can or she can prepare a class or his class uh, do you think can have it without subscribe for uh, f2t2 mission um sorry like uh for preparatory material yeah, yeah just to have a preparatory material to have and to show and to see if a teacher can can do it or yeah. can prepare his or his or her class yeah they they can uh, they can check like before before to subscribe actually this material preparatory material that you have seen before you can download and mm -hmm. uh, you can check already if it is uh, affordable by your students or not that's great i have another question which is uh, more interesting as well for me because uh, we have uh, an international team here and uh, we are talking about r 2 t mission, which is the mission uh, that everybody from everywhere in the world can, can participate. Uh, this is a question open to all our speakers and uh, the person that uh, previously done this mission with this is or a class. Did you find which was the, uh, I mean, did you find any difficulties in the language speaking or uh, it was easy as well for the for the for the kids to understand. I think it was easier for the students than it was for me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, usually we try to uh, immerse it as a language learning opportunity as well. So if it's going to be so if in, so I check ahead of time as to what the language of the event will be. So if it's an English event, then the team understands they must try to, at most to converse in English. If it's gonna be in French, then they should try at most to converse in French. Um, I have found that as the uh, teams kind of start communicating and collaborating with each other, uh, they might slip up and uh, say something in their, in their mother tongue real quick, but then it's easily corrected. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to see the uh, level of complexity that multiple languages presents in, in this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, Dan. I don't know if uh, anybody else want to say something about that. Yes, please go ahead. I think also for us, um, one of the things we noticed is that the children were not bothered about the language. We were um, listening to French and none of us could speak it at all. And that wasn't a problem. There was a task at hand and somehow they managed to communicate with each other and figure it out. So the language actually isn't a barrier. It just creates a little bit of hype and sensation and ooh la la. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's a pleasure. The children are not worried about it. And we don't have a yeah. cooking clue what we're doing. <laughs> Thanks a lot for your feedback. It's really interesting to see and to hear. I mean, that from, uh, from a teacher and from somebody already done that. and. Uh, so for kids, uh, there's no problem about languages. Actually, it's a way of improving and, uh, and uh, to as well to keep up their curiosity. So um, actually, I, I, I would have other question, but I don't know if we are missing sometimes, uh, or maybe if some of these teacher present in the chat would like to, uh, to ask something directly to our speakers, or maybe even in French, we can translate. If you are Italian, I can translate to French or to English, though, so don't, don't worry. Or Russian as well. <laughs> we have uh, Evgenia here. So if you have any question, please do not hesitate to uh, speak up. You can unmute your microphone and ask your question if it is more easy for you. And if not, I, I want to make an announcement because we are all here. So the next webinar will be in the language of the pizza and the lasagna in the beautiful language of Italian. So it will be on the 26th of May uh, at the same hour. So you are also more than welcome to come. Of course, it will be in Italian, but uh, yeah, we will have many um, speakers coming too. So you are more than welcome to come. And another small announcement is uh, from myself. Actually, I'm uh, from Mobsy Association. And this year, 
is 10 years anniversary of Timio. So we are gonna come back to you, to our community with a lot of surprises and uh, with a lot of uh, other, um, I will uh, actually, I will keep you updated because it's, uh, it's kind of a uh, uh, big year for us. <laughs> And I have, uh, yeah, uh, Karen, you're right. We are going to make a, a souvenir picture. So if you wish to be on the souvenir picture, you can turn on your camera. And uh, in a few seconds, we are going to, to take it. So I let you turn off the camera. Hi, Guillaume, I see you. Hi, Gregorios. It's nice also to see the, the different faces of uh, Hello, people. Hello, Georges. <laughs> okay, so are you ready for the picture? I am uh, just one moment because I'm going ah, okay. through each participant and uh, okay. <laughs> to okay. allow I, I, to open. I give you, I give you some, some, yes, some, some seconds. Thank you. And because you are doing that, uh, don't forget that we have the Roteco Spring Contest for special needs education children. So if you want to participate, of course, you are more than welcome. Oh, I like, Karen, that you have the Timio on your hands. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, uh, Evgenia, you, you give me the green light when you have finished. Um... I have already. Okay. So I think that we can make the, the, yeah. the souvenir picture. So we are going to do one, two, three, cheese. Okay, I will do another one. Please give me one second. Are you ready? Big smile. One, two, three, cheese. Perfect. So we have two pictures. We are going to share with you as always on the, on the, uh, and share the link to this uh, webinar that we are going to put online. Uh, as always, it is a pleasure to have you here. And we are here still some minutes. So if you have questions or you want to talk with us, you are more than welcome to, to take the floor. And I'm stopping or the, if you the want to, of yeah. the video. So right now.